So, Matt, I could not be more excited for this episode. Me too, man. It's, um, like, I've been hearing, I've heard about this for a long time, and I can't believe, like, we never thought to, to hunt this down and do it for an episode. It's the script, the Oliver Stone original script for Conan the Barbarian. Barbarian. Now, Conan the Barbarian, it's one of my favorite movies. I fucking love it. And I'd always heard about that that Oliver Stone script and that it was, like, insane, unfilmable, <laughs> a fever dream, and we finally read it. If we read it for the first time. I didn't know its existence. Oh, you didn't know about Okay, yeah. No, I got um, turned on to it from a uh, Total Recall fan. Jeff okay. Robertson, like, uh, reached out and hit, to, hit me to it. Yeah, because these are some of my favorite episodes where we, like take a script like the batman script yeah. was like one of our first episodes the um and then one of our early ones was the um the third star wars sequel movie oh that didn't get gosh. made that strip. so it's just so much fun see because you get to have the movie this like movie that never got made playing in your head and and then you also get to like compare oh and mario puzo's superman, superman. Script. you get to sort of compare it to the movie you saw but then you get this like it was just such a fun read it was such a fun read and like i breezed through it i imagine myself being like off like someone's like all right matt this is the agent gives you the script you're like reading it for the first time and like oliver stone and then john melius made the movie yeah a, a dino de laurentis production oh. and it is interesting seeing the contrasting styles of melius and oliver stone and what they bring to the table oliver stone it seemed like he like really did his homework or maybe he was like a huge fan of Conan because it was like, it really felt like, you know, like a, like a two hour long Conan comic. It was very, uh, very true to the comics, you know, true to the pulps of course too. But like, I mean, only connect with Conan via the comics it, and it just felt like straight out of there. Dude, it was, you were, when you said fever dream, yeah. you're right. I felt like there was like little like psychedelic kind of mm -hmm. like drug kind of like yeah, I can influx picture, on that. I can picture like the Oliver Stone directed version of it. I could see an executive reading that because it was a great read. And awesome. It, when I, at, in the beginning, I was kind of like, well, what do they mean by a fever dream? Because this is kind of, this isn't that crazy. But it, it ramps up. It gets crazier and crazier as it goes on. Like in, the, in the beginning, it starts out with, like, you're seeing, like, the world. You're seeing, like, yep. a map of the world. And then this, like, you see, like, the, um, continents. the continents break and crack yeah. and crumble. And then it, like, reforms into, like, the Conan, the Barbarian, Hyborian Age map. Now, I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's like you know, metaphorical or like psychedelic or, you know, whatever. I don't know that, that, um, that Oliver Stone intended this, but I feel like if you saw that in the theater, you would assume that this is taking place in a post apocalyptic yes. world. Um, and, and like the, the, the script didn't spell that out, but I, I felt like it kind of, you know, it would imply that visually, you know, unless there was some specific voiceover or something, which, which wasn't, wasn't really in, in, there. in there. So I thought, Man, I never thought of Conan that way, but you really could present this as that way that like, you know, Definitely. civilizations fall in and here, you know, like like uh, you know, like you know, there was the post-apocalyptic barbarian subgenre that yes. sort of, you know, and, and which I touched on with uh, American, American barbarian. barbarian. They had a lot of mutants. Mutants, so yeah, they were like irradi mutants. Irradi could be irradiated well, yeah, like Yeah, he had which like that that's part of what brings the budget up cuz like the, in, oh my in, god! In in the in the filmed version, in the finished version, there's not mutants. There's mullets. Mullets. <laughs> mullets, of mullets instead of, instead of mutants. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like someone's like uh, gets like radiation on the mullet, their mullet, and it like starts growing. <laughs> but I guess like the mutants, it could be radiation. It could just be like somebody finding you know natural. Uh, what there there are naturally occurring radioactive you know, yes. elements. So, so maybe that could have caused it or, I mean, mutation can be caused from it. It's just, we, when we think of mutants, we think of like post-apocalyptic stories, yeah. you know, and, and that it's like nuclear bombs or whatever, but a mutant could come about any kind of way. Like, I feel like for him, it was kind of like a shorthand and just, you know, that it's just these kind of like creatures. demons, these creatures, Love but, the creatures, but man. I mean, maybe, maybe it was radiation or, or, you know, and it, you know, it could be any number of things, but yeah, all these creatures. So like, and then Thulsa Doom himself is way more kind of like, uh, you know, demonic and, you know. Definitely. There's some great bad guys that we missed out on seeing on film. Conan's like childhood and his village and stuff. 
that that's um, re, you know handled really nicely. It's it's really good. And his dad tells him about Crom and stuff. In the final version, you know, like in both versions, they talk about how you know Crom doesn't really give a shit about us, so we're, you're kind of on your own. But like in the, the Oliver Stone version, he's like telling him, his dad's telling him about Crom, the god that they worship, and he's like saying that Crom breathed life into each one of us, and so blah blah blah. Now. They take that. That's not in the filmed version. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 kind of like, why the fuck do we worship this guy Crom? Like he's such an asshole. He like he doesn't doesn't do shit for us. <laughs> he like he created steel and we found it on our own. Like he didn't give it to us. We just found it. So like, and I really liked that. In I really like that in the Conan yes. movie. How indifferent their god is to them. And and when when uh, in in the stone version like that was a good that was a good edit taking out the thing oh, of yeah. Krom because because then it's kind of like oh, well of course we worship Krom because he breathed life into us yeah we have to but I like the idea of a god that like you don't owe shit to you know the, some great conversations when we get when uh, to the movie Arnold's eating like the chicken and stuff around the body he's like what gods do you worship yeah when he asks but, him, yeah that's an, like I, I can't imagine him having that conversation for real like that felt a little for what gods do you worship and he's like I, and, and then he says like this is like a continuity gap he's like I pray to Krom and then like later on in the movie he's like Krom I have never prayed to you before but so like was he just bullshit he's like I pray to Krom I've never prayed to Krom but I pray to Krom Krom I never prayed to you before <laughs> But like that speech, Arnold never had that, or Conan, you know, the Conan, like the Conan that's in the, uh, the script is very much the Conan from the comics. I recognize him as the Conan from the comics. The, the Conan in the movie is a different thing. I love the movie. I love this Conan. I love this story, love it. but it is like very different from the comics. Every, everything about this script is, is so, it, the comics, and also like reading the script I was picturing Sylvester Stallone I was too. as as the Conan role, and I wonder if, I mean, like I don't know any of the story behind the story. I don't know if like he was offered it or if he was involved in some, but it felt like it was written for. And and like in, in my head, he what like Me too. Uh, early '80s Stallone was kind of like you know perfect I, for. This. I'm right with you, Tom, because I was like trying, I was trying to see when Arnold was attached to yeah. it because I'm reading through it and we were talking about how it uh, was unfilmable. I was like, yeah. okay, why wasn't it like this? I'm like, the budget has to be ballooning. Yeah. And then there's a lot more lines for Arnold in the script. Right, yeah. He was, he was he was way more articulate and, and Conan is a very articulate character. You know, not in this movie but in, you know, so, so yeah, they did have to they trimmed lines but I mean they because like everything was just more expensive because every scene had more mutants and stuff the attack when when they attack uh, Conan's village at the beginning huge it's like they have these things called vulture bats I love that thing oh my god that's uh, like my favorite yeah thing. so it's like these giant half vulture half bats attacking along with like Thulsa Doom's army how awesome was that they don't have the wheel they cut from Yes. That, the, the, the attack where Conan gets like put in, his family gets killed, he gets put in chains, and then um, you cut to adult Conan running, running. you know, has, has his chains cut, and he's like running from the wolves, like they, which, which is a scene in the movie too, he's like, you know, running from the wolves, and, um, and I, th I think he like kills the wolf with his bare hands, he doesn't, yeah. fight, like, I mean, there's just, there's so many great things in the movie that John Melius added that isn't in, in Oliver Stone's script. But then the flip side is Oliver Stone's script has so much great stuff. So much that, great yeah. stuff. And it's funny too, it's like, <laughs> Conan, you think of Conan as like sprawling, like luscious, like honking, but then you're like, yeah, John Milius really made it a small movie. You're exactly right. <laughs> that You nailed it. It is It is such an epic. It's, it's a pretty long movie. And yeah, it's really epic. It has this great scope. But like, the scope in in the, uh, the Oliver Stone one was like cosmic, and it, and it becomes kind of like uh, I mean there are echoes of Spartacus in in the filmed version, but it was really like Spartacus because as it goes on, it builds towards this like vast these vast armies of like mutants and various uh, you know civilizations and all like clashing with Conan on his horse leading these armies. So and awesome! Again, like straight out of the comics, <laughs> straight out of the books. Uh, you know, so great, and it's like, yeah, we gotta cut this. We can't have it. You know, <laughs> it felt like Lord of the Rings, kind very of. Lord of the Rings. Like Lord of the Rings and Conan are kind of like they're parallel, and um, you know, and and the time that they were made kind of overlaps a little bit. Like like uh, 
Robert E. Howard's doing it in the 30s. Um, I, I, I think that um, like Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit might have started in the 30s and then like finished sometime in the 40s or something. But the, the tone and the intent is different. Um, you know, uh, Conan is all about like, you know, crush your <laughs> enemy. And then, um, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings is about like mercy and love, you know, giving everybody a shot. There, there was so many... Uh great mutants in that final battle i the one they're like uh it was a jackal with a jock strap on dude yeah his descriptions are great again like like i don't know if anybody ever did a comic adaptation Holy of this oliver stone shit. script i mean i'm i'm volunteering Please. for it it's just great it, it it is so like a comic like like he was just he was like a few decades ahead of his time because if you made a conan movie based on this script it would be amazing and uh valeria was handled differently yeah. in the two versions. Um, you know, she falls in love with Conan, but there's like some love triangles and, mm -hmm. and, and some jealousy and stuff. And and she doesn't die in no. it. Like, you know, um, that hits me hard. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, again, like really smart edits. You can't slight what Oliver Stone did because he really like laid, you know, amazing groundwork. And then, uh, you know, Melius came in and, you know, tightened and changed and, the Oliver Stone version is very episodic. It's like this happens and then this happens, which, you know, is like the books, like the comics. But um, the Emilius version, it, it's tightened up. They, they make, you know, um, Thulsa Doom more of like the central guy where he kind of is on the fringes and Definitely. shows up. He's like hanging in the background yeah. until the very end. We're such great bad guys. Who was the character? It was um, the queen's, like, the princess's, like, twin, evil yeah, twin. Yeah, it was, like, some some witch that could shapeshift to oh, look, great. look like the princess or the queen. Yeah, and, and she was, like, um, the princess becomes so much more of a background character in the Melius version, where she's basically, like, the princess in a video game, just, like, somebody you gotta you rescue. rescue. And she's kind of, like, uh, Stockholm Syndrome. Where oh, she's yeah. Like, she's killing yeah. people. And the... Melius of the movie Bratz, he was, like, a... <laughs> He's like kind of like a feels like a war hawk kind of. Yeah, he was like a he was like a right wing guy, and Oliver Stone's definitely coming from like a like a left wing like a hippie yeah. perspective, and you see that in the scripts where um, like there's so much sort of criticism of sort of like the hippie movement hippie and the flower power movement in Melius's version mm -hmm. that is not in uh, in in Stone's. The, in Stone's version. It's uh, like it's like it's like super critical. Like like Thulsa Doom's cult is like a Manson family kind of thing. And they are like handing out flowers and yeah. stuff. Uh, and, and Melius is, is more like, I can do everything on my own. Where it's like, he's he's crucified to the to the tree and then he, you know, bites the, 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 the vulture. vulture and stuff. Where in the Oliver Stone one, it's like he's crucified to the tree and then a bunch of people, Valeria being one of them, and, and like she hasn't met him yet. And they're just kind of like, oh look, there's that guy on a tree. Let's cut him down. And like the guy who cuts him down, then it becomes like a, like a um, Dune kind of thing where Conan like almost immediately after this guy cuts him down challenges him to a fight, and and it's the guy is is the guy who killed Kills, his mom, yeah. killed his mom and dad, uh, and 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 so they 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 fight and Conan kills him, and then now Conan is like takes his place in the tribe, you yeah. Know? Um, the tree, well, great wrestling move too. It's where you put somebody upside down the turnbuckle. <laughs> yeah, Melius Mil like a... made it more of a buddy movie, which again, I think, like, I think, I think Melius's changes made it more filmable, more of like a crowd pleaser. I mean, this the 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 regular Conan movie. What I love about it so much is how offbeat it it's is, insane. how weird, but it does have like enough sort of of the crowd pleasing elements to to like make it a a hit. You know, you're so right about that. Uh, and more into like more video game or D and D in this one. Like I like when he comes out of the witch's hut. The the um, thief is like chained up. It's yeah. like there. He, it's like that was where you would meet him in like the game. Yeah. Like he's right there. It's like hello and like yeah, right. it's like and a then perfect the text moment. Comes up. In Stone's version, Conan meets that like witch in the hut, and she's like picking her nose in the. Th she's like picking her nose. I don't think it doesn't say anything about her eating them, but. <laughs> She, she's picking her nose. I do the stuff. fan edit. Right. <laughs> she's picking her what nose. <laughs> she's picking her nose. And then, like, Conan kind of starts to realize something's up. Something's weird. And then she tries to seduce him. Yeah. And it's like, it's the wrong order. It's in the wrong order. He's not going to see her picking her nose and something be like, hey, come over here, baby. Come on over here. 
you wouldn't want to polish the helmet. Like, so Melius was smart to kind of have them, you know, kind of like get it on, <laughs> and then she starts acting. They're not straight up like snake stuff. It's like the kind of snakeish where like you get bitten by the sna like snake and then you get poisoned, mm -hmm. kind of like transformed into like different creatures. Like, yeah, I mean that might be what the mutants are. Are sort of like oh. they've been bitten by these kind of were werewolves or uh, werewolves um, or were snakes or something. Please, just color. all the image like. It's such a well-written script. I mean, I don't know how like useful the information is, in, but like part of like a, a great script is just kind of making the movie come alive in the mind of the reader, so that somebody is going to be like, "Yes, I will make this movie." And it it delivered. Another kind of difference when um, there's the the tower. You know, it's it's an early scene in here. It's it's kind of where the the whole team kind of comes together, yeah. and where they meet Valeria. Um, they don't meet Valeria in this in this one in, in the script. Conan. Uh, comes to this tower and then he meets another thief yeah. who isn't uh, Sagatai. It's, it's a different, different thief. I forget his name, but they, they meet and then they kind of team up. They're scaling they, they, yeah, they it. Yeah, scale. That they go in and then there's there's like the giant snake, but then there's also this like mutant who like keeps showing up through it, but he's like, <laughs> so he's like awesome. this albino and, and he's uh, kind of like giant and stuff. And again, feels like it's straight out of the comic. Feels like, you know, something... Because... The comic was always like a little more complicated. You'd have like the big monster, but then you'd also have some like little side monsters. And so this guy shows up and then he kills the friend that Conan just made. Yeah. You know, as opposed to that's that's like in the in the in the final film, that's where he meets Sagatai and then they kinda of join up and, and they and they meet um, Valeria and then they kinda of come out of it together and, and they're kinda of buddies. Uh, solidifies their friendship, but like in this it's like, yeah, just you hang out with Conan, you usually end up dying. And um, <laughs> glass yeah. tower looked pretty cool imagery in yeah. the um, in the screenplay, and uh, very funny too. Like there were some good one liners. Then when it was like, uh, what is this salad? Or what is she that was pretty that? funny. Yeah, I, I cracked up with like you. You know that like Melius was like, get this salad <laughs> thing out of here. No, Conan doesn't eat salad. <laughs> what is this salad? Yeah, she, oh, salad. It's good. It's good. Like <laughs> the fact that he liked it. It's like yeah, this isn't. <laughs> This isn't Melius' <laughs> script. If if because Melius, he'd be like, ah, what is this shit? What is this shit? A real man only eats red meat. <laughs> yeah. Are you trying to kill me with this bullshit? This flower power bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot more like palace intrigue in in the script. Uh, you know, again, like you were saying about sort of this like twin of the of the of the princess who's who takes over, and then she does like it's it's like the thing in like. Uh, Batman or something where the Joker calls it like she calls in all her subordinates hey come in here and then and then she's like you're all fired and here's your replacement and then like Thulsa Doom and all the mutants come in oh I get so pumped up dude this is canon it's, it's this is I'm so glad Stone has this existing there's that yeah. that guy Brack or whatever yeah. he's kind of like 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 almost like a Darth Maul kind of looking mm -hmm. thing with a weird red and black like cloak. Yeah, he's like got fangs, like rat. He's like a rat kind of mutant ish. Yeah, the, great fight with Conan at the end. I feel like um, you know a lot of these movies are sort you know are sort of coming out in the shadow of Star Wars, and I feel like Oliver Stone saw Star Wars, saw the Cantina scene, and it's like. What a waste! You go in this cantina. There's all these crazy looking characters, and then they leave the cantina, and it's and they're just fighting British guys for the rest of the movie. Like, what if, you know, it's like Star Wars, but they got to fight an army instead of, of fighting stormtroopers or whatever. They got to fight an army of like cantina creatures because that's what he's and he's describing them like you said pretty exquisitely. These, uh, you know, John strapped <laughs> jackal. Dr. about his flexing butt cheeks, and it's like we don't have the budget. We don't have the yeah, we don't have the budget for like a million creatures. But like now, you could make that movie, and um, it would be overly lit and look like a shit Netflix yeah, movie. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> um, so so it's like you know you go through the script and like here okay we just we just saved ourselves a million dollars here. We just saved ourselves a million dollars here. We're cutting out the final battle because again the final battle in this it's like a version of the final battle. That, that we see in the script, but it's like, it's, yeah, instead of Conan leading an army, he leads him and, like, three other people, people you know. <laughs> that throne room scene is great, but it's, like, it's, it, it's, like, one page in the Stone yeah. script. And I can imagine Stone being in, like, the producer's office. He's, like, pitching this, and he's got somebody dressed up in the jackal jockstrap. They're like, 
sorry, we're not going to do the movie. Yeah. And the jackal walk, guy... Walk. Like, yeah, he's like... He, like, walks, <laughs> like, walks out. <laughs> like, they go to different cities and stuff. And then they go to, like, the mutant city. Like, the, the city that's been taken over by wow. the mutants. And there's a scene of, like, mutant childbirth. Where, like, a mutant is born. Fuck and it's like, these, these wow. mutants... These mutants are, like, fucking everybody. And, like... And, and that... If somebody doesn't do something, the whole world's going to get taken over by mutants. It's going to be all mutants. Mutant dogs. Mutant dogs. And, like, the mutant city. And, and the mutants, they, they kind of, they, they eat the old. Like, they, they, yeah. there's cannibalism and stuff. And, like, the cannibalism in this movie, like, it works. It's interesting. It really shows you, you know, the, the darkness of, of like, uh, like, Thulsa Doom's cult. That it's not, you know, he talks about peace and love, but it's real. you know, they're, they're these sort of, like, cannibals. But... It's it's like a a little like it fits the the stone script perfectly because it's like of course these mutants are like eating people's hands and stuff. Uh, and you're right, Tom. I prefer to not they're not like nuclear bomb <laughs> like I like how like they're just the mutants like. Well, I mean, it's it's interesting to me though that you like you could read Conan. You could read this Conan movie and then possibly the entire Conan thing as a post-apocalyptic story because they do talk about like civilization rising and falling a number of times prior to this so again i don't think it's intentional but it's it's, it's nice there. It's, yeah it's there and it's nice and you see this way more like conan action in the script there's a million kind of conan sword fights spectacular sword fights it's watching this movie it's kind of minimal there's a lot of sneaking around a lot of skulking and this and that but, hanging out by a fire yeah but the, the sword fights are are minimal again like it's budgetary it's like pacing and stuff i've seen this movie a million times yeah but it's longer than you remember and it kind of puts me it's kind of like a hangout movie yeah it's, it, it puts it, me in a like fugue state yeah watching. It, it, it's like a spaghetti western yeah it's it's very uh sprawling and sparse and a lot of quiet um i i really do like the way it takes like th there is a very direct a to b to c to d logic in the filmed version where the the stone one is like it ta i mean it takes you to these amazing places and stuff but but this kind of uh it's you know like keep it simple stupid it kind of you know I, I love that green slime with the hands and the mm -hmm. head and the skulls in yeah that the the, the uh, sort of cannibalism scene and, and yet it's like like the 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 thulsa doom's gang is like so weird so scary so strange but until you read the the Oliver Stone version, this looks it's like everything's like on the up and up in this mm -hmm. one. Yeah, Stone's version, like everyone's like snorting Black Lotus. Yeah, yeah, the Black Lotus stuff in here, and then there's some lines like Conan is like way like he's like the, the character is way more cynical in the Melius version, probably matching Melius's own cynicism. So there's like lines that people say about Conan in the stone script where like, you know, Conan's ha hanging on, on the, on the tree or whatever. And people are like, Oh, if he's strong enough, he'll get out on his own and stuff like that. Or, you know, if, if, if he deserves to survive, he'll survive where they, they take that line and then they give it to Conan to say in, in the Melius version where it's like, he sees like some guy like, and he's like, Oh, if he, if he, you know, if he deserves to live, he will live. If not, he will die. Conan is more like Rocky. Yeah, in, in the in the um, stone version, he is more like you know, kind of this like good you know, good guy, man of the people. Thulsa Doom in this, again, yeah, he's on, he, and people speak of him in 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 great terms. In the in the stone script, he doesn't have like a cult. He's not a religious leader. He's um, he is just kind of this like this like wizard, this sort of conqueror who's like up to all kinds of shenanigans, and and he worships Set and they, Set. the snake god, and they talk about Set. But the, the the climax of the stone version wow. set himself appears. Um, Conan fights Thulsa Doom, like cuts his head off, cuts his like he kind of transforming. Yeah, he butchers him, and it becomes like uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. It's so where his head awesome. grows like wings, wings and stuff, and becomes its own creature. His torso grows some stuff, becomes a creature, and like Conan is like, "What the fuck is going on?" And then Set himself shows up. This like giant snake god bursts up out of the earth. And like, and kind of takes, uh, takes Thulsa Doom's pieces in his arms, and kind of like is almost like motherly, kind of like like the script talks about him being sort of 
motherly and bringing Thulsa Doom back in, where he's like kind of like mercifully bringing Thulsa Doom back under. It's like, and again, it's like very true to the comics and, and the stories where it would have these like weird mystical offbeat endings where Conan just kind of like scratches his head and he's like, I don't, I don't know what the fuck just happened. You know, but but something happened, and at least I'm still alive. You know, I love. I, I was sad when that one guy. He was like, "I'll follow you, Skull Crusher," yeah. and then he goes and fights that one like harpy, and then Conan looks over in battle and sees his head like pop up on a pike, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, it, Oliver Stone envisioned this. Like, it is almost like a Ray Harryhausen movie. What he's writing, like, and wow. the, the filmed version is not a Ray Harryhausen movie, but his it, Stone's version is where it's got harpies Harpies. flying around what are those like clash of the titans is closer to uh oliver stone's script than than this tom i would like like kill to see a a, your uh comic my comic adaptation of the oliver stone uh yeah marvel no longer has the rights to conan comics so whoever does but again maybe somebody maybe somebody did this in like 1987 or something (laughs) i don't know but but to me it's like it's just the, the the script is so visual and so much fun and like just lends itself to, to comics. It really was like like a like a living comic book and, and had that like I, I, I think they made the right call. I think that movie was impossible Definitely. to make at that time on that budget. They made a classic, you know, so on awesome. their on their budget and, and it just but you know, t- times are different now. The the Netflix uh, <laughs> the Oliver Stone cut released the yeah. stone cut yes. of uh, of Conan. Stone was, uh, he reached out to uh, Ridley Scott. Okay. He took it to him when he was filming Alien. Okay. And Ridley Scott was interested, but he said he already had another fo- movie tied up, and it was Blade Runner. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so. I hear you. He had that, uh, and then Joe Alves was another guy that they tried. He, he did, like, second unit stuff on Jaws. Mm-hmm. And, uh. So this was like a, an Oliver Stone passion project. Yeah. So I'm picturing him being like just thinking of like his age. He probably was like he was probably like a teenager when they started making the comics. He, you know, and and you know maybe was reading the the paperbacks, uh, you know, with the Frazetta covers and stuff, and then the comic comes out. Heck and he's, yeah. Because re- it he felt it, it the script seemed very versed like it was made by a fan so i don't know if he just like did a lot of research or if he was coming from that fan space it was both and i i I, in the screenplay he mentions frazetta yeah he does yeah and the date on it was 78 Mm -hmm. for the screenplay and it was his a fault he had done one movie prior to it so it was like he was new like still like the new guy this movie like it came out in 82 but i always think of it as like a 70s movie it feels like a 70s movie it's like it's like way more cynical and and sort of R-rated than an 80s movie, you know, like like oh um, my God. Conan the Destroyer definitely feels like an 80s movie. This does it feels so like the fact that he wrote it in the 70s. I can't sense. wait till we talk about Conan the Destroyer. How did Dino De Laurentiis get involved? I can't remember. Somehow yeah, somewhere along the line when when De Laurentiis got involved, it was um they had already done a ton of, spent a lot of money on like exploratory stuff. Yeah. And he was like, uh, we're going to work, the budget would went. Yeah. They, they down. do so much with this budget, you know? And, and, and yeah, I get it. Like, uh, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to spend millions making a mutant army. <laughs> yeah, like, kind of like army of darkness is another thing that's kind of closer to that script. When you're talking about that fugue state that you go into watching it, like I get, because you do get hypnotized, you do kind of like forget where you are, and then it kind of ushers you into like weird dreamlike stuff. And it's got it's got like the music, the sort of like snake charmer music, Mm -hmm. and and like all the snake imagery and stuff. And then before you know it, yeah, you're seeing Um, like uh, visions, like when when. Thulsa Doom, James Earl Jones starts to like morph into the snake. You're like, am I okay? Am I imagining? I did too. I was like, Valeria. Valeria is so great, and it it, like I get you know like having her die in the story. It does give it some emotional Uh, weight, and their like you know their love story is kind of cool. But you kind of wish she would have stuck around, been in some of the sequels. In in the it it's nice in the Stone script because Conan kind of has like two. Uh, loves that he can choose from. Yeah. He's, he's got Valeria, who's like more her, his equal, and then um, he has 
uh, the, the, the queen, you know, who's like kind of what, like his aspirational kind of thing. And, and Valeria is kind of like, oh, you know, he, you know, he likes her better. And so, and then she like, w when she kind of like realizes that, that it looks like he's going to be going with the queen, she, she like kicks his ass. She like beats him up. She like starts beating up Conan and stuff. And then, and then it kind of ends with like a wedding. They're getting ready for like the wedding of Conan to this princess and he's going to finally become a king. And they talk about all the prophecies of him becoming a king. And then he's like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's like, you can't hold me down. <laughs> yeah. So then he like leaves and goes off to go have like more adventures with, with Valyria and, and, and the queen kind of knows that like, okay, Conan's not coming back. He's like, you know, he's out of my life. Like I'm, I'm going to have to go down a more conventional, uh, you know, life direction as he goes off on his, and he says like, come with me. We'll have adventures. We'll have adventures together. Come with me. You can eat salad. Yeah. Yeah. You introduce me to salad. Uh, you know, and, and she's like, no, that's not my, you know, I'm, I, I have this like civilized life of the responsibilities of a queen and you can be part of that and have the responsibility. And he's like, no, I got to go do my thing. So my wild dogs, <laughs> you know, we, we will have fun together. We'll be together and uh, we'll have fun. And when it gets, when we get tired of it, we go our separate ways. You know, he's like, because, like, in that scene, there's, like, he's, like, looking over the balcony at, like, all the people yeah. down below. And he's probably got, like, a huge Conan crown on. Him. Yeah, he's, like, not ready for it yet. And, like, and like that that's part of, like, the story of Conan, that, like, this is what awaits him. And I think maybe, like, the first Conan story or the first published Conan story was told from that point of view. It's, like, Conan is a king. He's middle-aged. And he's, like, looking back on his career and stuff. And there, there's, like, some palace intrigue. You know, some people coming to get him. And, 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 and it refers back to his old adventures. And then, like, the next Conan story and, like, the rest of the Conan stories are, like, his, like, backstory. Okay. You know, from, you know, from what I recall. I can't believe Jason Momoa, Conan aside, there's only been two Conan movies. You'd figure this character's right for, like, a James Bond, like, attack. Uh, yeah, Why? Like, Why? I, I mean, Why? I feel like they could have, um, like, it kind of had, it's, it's just, like, it was attached, it was so identified with Schwarzenegger, and he, his... Career awesome. was just going in so many other directions. It's like, and he so probably it kinda, shut it down. It kind of shut it down. And Conan the Destroyer, in my opinion, was a little weak. Conan the Barbarian's a classic. Conan the Destroyer, it's a little like like if they if they had had a stronger second outing, it might have kept you know, it going. Continued. We got to cover Conan the yeah, Destroyer. Yeah, we will. We will. Wilt the still Chamberlain. Yeah, yeah. Very eighties. Very iconic. And like, I mean, I had known Conan the I had known Conan the Destroyer. Um, like way before I knew the first Conan movie because Conan the Destroyer would be on TV all the time and they would never show Conan the Barbarian because no. it was just too like too, too, too many boobs you know yeah. Like, yeah you just couldn't there was too much you had to cut out I saw the Destroyer before Conan as well because it was always on Fox 53 yeah it was it was very <laughs> iconic you got Grace Jones uh, you know great uh, great team uh, you got um, like there's the one thief in Conan the Destroyer, who seems like he could be played by Jim Varney. <laughs> like, like still my heart. There, I think Ernie Rise Jr. might be lurking yeah. around in there. Great movie, great script. So glad we, we read the script. We might have to do a separate Conan the Barbarian, just like the movie, like separate Absolutely. from the script. But I'm so glad. I love these episodes when we talk about a script. It's like reading a script is about as much as I can handle. Like reading like a novel, yeah. I, I kind of like... You know, I kind of my brain wanders. Yeah, I crap out before I make it to the end, usually with a novel. But like a movie script is like the perfect perfect. Length for, one for me forty, one hundred forty eight minutes with this movie would have. I been. want to. I want to read more of these now. There's there's another thing I'm gonna put out to like the Total Recall show fans. If anybody can help me with this, um, like maybe like fifteen year, ten fifteen years ago, they put out this collection of Conan stories, and. It was, um, like, we're all very familiar with, like, the L. Sprague de Camp edited versions that have been, like, but these were, like, the raw, like, the actual Robert E. Howard versions that hadn't been in print, you know, in a while, and all collected together. And then the typography in the book was made to look like an old typewriter, where, like, the, the letters are, like, a little oh, off register. Yeah. And stuff. It was so great. I, I got it out of the library. I read it and loved it. And... I can't for I can't I'm looking for it online like I want to buy it I can't find it online because it's kind of a needle in a haystack there's like so many different versions oh of God. these Conan stories so if anybody knows like the the exact name of what that what that volume was that had like 
a bunch of the Robert E. Howard versions with like typewriter please. lettering. Please send it our send way. Send it our, like let us know so I can you know uh, so I can find it. When we love uh, you know getting like these recommendations. Yeah, we love the recommendations. Yeah, so some somebody Jeff Robertson. Thanks, man. Yeah, Jeff Robertson was the one who uh, appro uh, approached us and suggested, uh, hey, why don't you guys read the. Uh, Oliver Stone, Conan and, the Barbarian. And also, like, the other recommendations that everyone has sent, too, those haven't gone unnoticed. So yeah. we, we're, like... We're adding them to... to the, uh, yes, to the, and some of them are things that we were already, like, planning to talk about. Yeah. But but there are a lot of ones that's like, oh, yeah. And the Conan the Barbarian, I'd, I'd heard about this script for a long time, and it just never occurred to me to, like, oh... I didn't know it existed. It. So. Yeah, like, just such so a fun such read. Fun. I had such a good time reading it. And, and all these episodes where we read the scripts... We haven't had a bad one yet. I've enjoyed no. every single one of them. The Batman one, the first, you know, two Batman movies. There's one I definitely want to do, the um, Shadow Company, Shane Black Shadow Company. Okay. Super exciting. You know what? Um, the, the one, it's kind of like a holy grail, and I think we would need um, Dan Aykroyd to send it to us. It's the Ghostbusters script. Oh, my send us, God, Send us that Dan. original. Uh, it's either a treatment or, or maybe it's a full script, but that, like... Uh, Ghostbusters yes. space opera, where Ghostbusters was originally like these guys who travel through time in a spaceship, go from planet to planet. <laughs> I want to read that so bad, but it's there, there's only fragments of, of it. it available. You know, he hasn't he hasn't released it. Before. If anyone set it free <laughs> in Dan Aykroyd's inner circle, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, or, or Dan, if you're watching, send yeah, it our way, send it along with a bottle of Crystal Skull vodka. <laughs> our Conan uh, Oliver Stone script episode, o Oliver, great job. And awesome. you can see this like fitting in into his filmography because, you know, he's got all those kind of weird movies where there's like super eight footage and then stuff starts playing backwards uh, yeah. and stuff. You Kevin can... Costner in JFK is like, Krom! <laughs> Krom! Krom. That, that was also missing, like in, in the Oliver Stone version, he's getting chased by the wolves and then they start like biting his neck or whatever and he like beats the, them up and, and, and in the Melius version, he finds that cave falls gets into the, it gets the sword it's like calm now i um i kind of wondered like it's it kind of implies that you know the the big dope that conan is in the melius version that like he's underground and it's like oh that's calm this is the guy my dad told me about this god who lived under the ground <laughs> and he's like he thinks it's cr that skeleton it's is calm and he gets steel from him and stuff which i think is like an implied reading it's a it's a reading that that i think was intended but you know throughout the movie he kind of you know just saying krom is like his version of saying god you or know zoot allure <laughs> 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 krom. so like he might have just been like saying you know holy shit or whatever you know, krom that's his like <laughs> <laughs> zoot allure <laughs> because zoot allure i mean i mean krom <laughs> krom Auga. Uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of the genre. I did my, I did American, American Barbarian, my own sort of take on this whole genre. So uh, I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, Fantastic Four Grand Design, and American Barbarian. I'm Matt Zioli. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey or on Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey. Follow me on Instagram at Cinema underscore Tomb.